I went in to Google Maps and spent almost no time finding three gas stations, which are that's pretty close to each other. Now, you would think that they would not be so close as to compete directly against each other. That fundamentally doesn't seem to make any sense. But this is actually really quite common. You see it all the time. There's plenty of anecdotes of restaurants, chains, very similar businesses, coffee shops, all being really, really close to each other. This is seemingly irrational. This is a very rational business strategy. Why would you want to be really close to your other competitors? But in fact, I can tell you this has a very, very, very elegant solution. This radical solution is in fact radical centrism. Yes, that's right, radical centrism is at the center of this mystery. But let's begin. Remember, video notes are in the description. Let's go. Have you ever wondered why gas stations are often near each other? If you think about it, it would be more efficient if gas stations were spaced out so that you didn't have to drive so far. What is also weird is that by putting them in a similar place, they are directly competing with each other. It seems like an odd strategy to build your businesses where all your other competition is within a short range. So right here we have a population distribution. As you can see right here, we have two main population centers within a short distance. Now our gas stations are going to be put at these minimum travel distances where they can reach all the consumers with the least amount of drive time. So the rules are very simple. The green is our, as I said, our population distribution. The closest gas station is who gets the customers. So we have right here the customers at this location and the customers at that location. They have about equal amount of customers because they're both in the two population centers. Now, let's imagine that these gas stations can move their location every so often. Below is a calculation of the direction it is beneficial for you to move in. Right here we have these arrows representing if it's beneficial to move in that direction. So we want to select one of the gas stations and move their location until you can no longer see an arrow. The arrow is only visible when there is a benefit to moving. So we're going to move Exxon. Exxon gets the first move. And we're going to move. And as you see right here, Exxon actually has a benefit to move away from that population center. And it keeps having a benefit. And it keeps going and going and going and going. And it's almost right next to the mobile gas station. Now the mobile gas station has their turn. It needs to respond to this Exxon shift in position. Well, it gets a benefit to move here. And then it moves here. And so... It gets the closest customers. So what it has done is that it has scooped up Exxon's domination on these customers. But now Exxon has to respond. So Exxon moves and then moves. And now, now it is capturing these customers. Eventually, as we've just shown, they will be in the center of the distribution and split their customers in half. If any of them decide to move, they will lose customers. They are in a stable equilibrium. In fact, it's a Nash equilibrium. This does, in fact, increase travel times for the population as people have to drive further and further to get their gas station. But it allows for gas stations to segment the population without allowing the competition the ability to relocate and steal market share away from them. Okay, so let's now reset these things, and let's use the allegorical transformation slider. So we have Jack Johnson and John Jackson. Now they may be identical twins, but they have two subtly different positions on government spending. So we have the position we spend too much, and we have the position we spend too little. Their customers are the voters, thus they want to offer a position to get them the most number of votes. Voters will vote for the politician that offers them the proposal closest to their preference. So we have the different policies. We have a moderate decrease and a moderate increase in government spending. These are the two most popular positions. There's a few people in the center that want basically no change. And then there's some people who want a lot or a significant decrease. Now, as you can see, just in the previous example, there is benefits to changing your position. So we'll start here, and we will adjust this person so that he can find the optimal position to get the most number of voters. So he relocates over here, 
And so his rival responds and wants to get the most voters. So he adjusts his position. I didn't change anything. So in the end, the equilibrium will be in the center. In the center, there is no desire to change your position because you cannot attract any new voters. This means that if there are a few people in the middle of the spectrum on some sort of issue, it tends to set policy. This is called the median voter theorem. Now, the thing we have to note is that this is not perfect. There is, of course, more than one issue. But what it does demonstrate is that there is an incentive to try to get to the median of every dimension on issues, or there'll be a tendency to focus on the median, as that is the more effective strategy. Now, of course, there's many issues, and we still see much difference. There are some issues where the preference is very much split, like we have here, and we still see that the position, even if it's unpopular, is still the center. So, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.